Seven quid a week? Not bad. Yeah, but you have to get up really early all week. So? What's this? I've got a new job. Yeah, Delivering papers. Well, I wish you had have asked us first. If you wanted some more money, we could have given you a bit of extra pocket money. Oh, no, I think that's a great idea. As long as the lad wanted to stand on his own two feet. It's winter, Jack. At that time of the morning, it's dark. It's not exactly safe. Oh, come on. Look, don't sit there laughing at me. You read about things happening. I thought I heard someone in one of the barns today. Yeah, you thought you did. I mean, no one would do anything if we all went round fearing what might happen. Good on you, lad. There was someone there. It could have been a tramp or something. Women, eh? <laughs> so, where is this job, then? Post office. I beg your pardon? Vic Windsor's. The post office in the village. Yes, I do know where it is. Well, maybe it's a good will gesture. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, it's bad enough getting up at the crack of dawn to mark them up, let alone freezing to death delivering the things. Look, Vic. If we don't get a paper boy soon, I will go spare. Yes, well. And I know we take it in turns, Vic, but quite honestly, I just can't bear another morning. <sighs> And those dogs up at Cowslip Cottage, they nearly tore me arm off this morning. Jaws like Bengali tigers, they want taken to that surgery and put him down. Well, they've never gone for me. Must be your scent or something. Anyway, look, the thing is... And it's it, ruining you know... me blouses. I don't see why you've got to wear a blouse to deliver papers. Because, Vic, I need the shoulder pads, the weight of that sack hanging off me. Any real man wouldn't see his wife hefting a load like that round in the first place. You all right, mate? And that Graham Clark wants to get net curtains up before someone reports him, swanning around with his cereal bowl in his birthday suit. Viv, will you shut up a minute? Well, someone's got to make conversation. I found someone to do the round. Well, why didn't you say so? Well, I couldn't get word in edgeways. It's Andy Hopwood. Starts tomorrow morning. Andy Hopwood? Yeah, he's dead keen. How could you? After all the terror him and that Sugden boy put up Donna through. Nah, it's all over. They're all friends now. I'll check with Donna. Of all the people! Oh, well, forgive and forget, eh, Viv? Well, never mind them being friends. You know what I think about that Sarah Sugden. How am I going to deal with her now that my husband's given a job to one of her lot? Oh, come on! Whose side are you on, Vic Windsor? Well, I'm not having it. When he turns up for work tomorrow, I am giving him his marching orders. No, I took him on. And what I say goes. Didn't it? Fill that bit of thin, uh, it was fresh. Can I have another whiskey, please? Dry white wine and a pint, please, yeah. Trish. Coming up. Well, I wonder if that's about you know what. People have got more important things to worry about than petty feuds. That's taken the weight off my mind. Come on, Viv. You said yourself where to find someone soon. Yes, I know I did. I'm not one of their lot. Well, he's not their son. I don't know why you can't just let things lie with the Sugdens. Um, we're not sworn enemies. Toffee-nosed cow. Can't stand her. Oh, look, Viv, let's not fall out. Come on. Finish your drink. We'll go home. Open a bottle of wine, eh? Hi. And how are you all?